Hello, today we are talking about getting organized. It is a couple of days after Christmas. What, two days after Christmas? Oh, today's, no, tomorrow's my cousin's birthday. Um, and it is time to start getting organized. Yes, I have already started. I took a load to the thrift store today, took my first load. Ooh, all right. I got another load ready to go. And so I am decluttering and getting rid of things. And so I thought I would share with you my trick for getting organized. You are going to get organized in 2024. And this one simple trick is how you're going to do it. You and you have the sim well, and the simple trick is simple for you because you came from a family of not organized, right? Yes. I came from my dad's side of the family <clears throat> are hoarders. And I mean, they're bad hoarders. They're like, TV show hoarders. <laughs> Any cousins in the chat who can, <laughs> who can testify? My cousin's on there and she still, she bought my grandmother's house and she probably still has my grandparents stuff in the basement because my aunts and uncles refused to get it out. And they're both gone and too. My grandparents have been dead for years. So I fully appreciate getting organized and staying organized. And let me tell you this one trick is all it takes to get organized. Yeah. Can Every day, you? do one drawer or cabinet. And that's it. That's the trick? That's the trick. Well, there you go. Pick one thing every day. And I'm not talking about picking one thing like doing your entire pantry. I'm talking about picking one thing like today, I clear off the kitchen table. Today, I clear off one drawer in my cabinet. So let me walk you through how I do this because I have my undated planner, guys. So if you don't have the undated planner yet, right here, 365 days, 400 pages, 365 days, undated. So if you forget a day, you don't have to worry that you've lost days on your planners. All right, I am going to show you how I do this. Now I'm gonna walk you through. Now here is, oops, this didn't get going. Okay, <clears throat> here is the, the daily pages. And I forgot to put the date up there. I don't ever usually date mine, but. Did you want it to get going? No. Oh. I'll run it. Um, okay, so here is the the daily here's the daily portion of my planner okay so you start with doing your to do things so like today mike and i clean the garage which honestly should have just been one to do thing as it was but i needed to clear the kitchen table from all of the after christmas sales that mom picked up for me and then i also need to scrub one of my chairs so that i could get the carpet cleaner back to my friend so those were my three things that i did today didn't have any appointments didn't have anything i need to remember having pizza tonight. So then down here on the daily clean and organize, can you take off the lower third? Um, it shows things that you need to do every single day. Now I have it down that I don't really need to check, make my bed anymore, do the dishes. I don't do laundry daily anymore. Just if I need to do laundry that day. So I just do laundry once every two weeks and that's it. Then, um, I needed to wipe the bathroom sinks and get the bathrooms cleaned up from the kids being gone Christmas and everything. Today was trash day. So all the trash has got empty. That's Mike's job, but I did a couple of the smaller ones. Got my clothes picked up and then uh, we don't have toys anymore. Well, not a lot. <laughs> did a general pickup, but here's my one thing that I did. One drawer or shelf. I need to do it in the kitchen. Now, what I do is I go to my weekly cleaning list and I do what my one drawer shelf. And then I also pick one or two things from my weekly cleaning. Now, what I do is just go by the room per week. So like, or day, you can do it by the week or per the day. But like Monday, I'll work on the kitchen. Tuesday, I'll work on the bedrooms. Thursday or Wednesday, I'll work on the dining room and the entry. Friday, I'll work on the living room. Saturday, I'll work on the laundry room and or the office because those are pretty good, pretty easy to do. 
So I just go through, I do it one day. I'll just pick a room and work on one room each day. You could do one room per week, however you want to do it. It's however you want to do it. You just rotate through and then you know you're always keeping up on your cleaning. Then down on the bottom here, you can see we have monthly chores and then as needed chores. So I already got some of the January as needed chores done. So I got the curtains washed, I got the rugs washed, I got the window washed. So I got all those done already for January. And then I know each month I'm getting those things done or for the as needed, it's usually every three to six months or, or year. Like I only do the curtains once a year. Uh, I wash the windows once every two to four months, depending on how bad they are. But at least I know that I'm getting them done. Okay. Now, let me show you what this looks like in real life. So today I worked on a drawer in the kitchen, or this was, this drawer was yesterday. I worked, we, uh, <laughs> you love me, don't you? I do. We spent eight hours <laughs> repairing the middle drawers in our new kitchen remodel this week. Um, <laughs> so not just the middle ones. <laughs> yeah. All like several drawers in our kitchen remodel this week. And so since we got it repaired, this one needed to be cleaned and reorganized. So I got the center one cleaned and reorganized and got new uh, sliders put on it. And then the top one, we got the sliders fixed. So I went ahead and got this one all cleaned and organized up. And look, I got all of this stuff just from those two drawers or shelves. All of this stuff here this mixer, the a chopper, a couple of pans that I decide I don't want to use anymore. And I got all of that gone just in 10 minutes worth of organizing. I got a box work, worth of stuff gone just in 10 minutes worth of organizing two drawers. But it only took me 10 minutes. And now those drawers are done for the next month or two and then i'll just go in now the thing is is if you keep up on this and do one drawer or one cabinet every day for five or ten minutes by the time you're done within 12 weeks or so you should have every single cabinet and drawer in your whole entire house gone through then you just start again and go over so like for tomorrow's list this is on the list for tomorrow. <laughs> this, is, this is what was Girl, our you got a drinking problem. I know. <laughs> <laughs> this was our drink drawer. And I was putting the bread in here and all the um all the buns, the hamburger buns and stuff like that. But this drawer exploded after Christmas when Jack got an espresso maker. And I'm like this is not going to be working anymore. I've got to do something to figure this out. And so on my list now is this drawer. Tomorrow I'm going to be getting this one organized, moving the bread and stuff to a different location again. <laughs> we still aren't totally in the groove with the new kitchen yet. But by doing one drawer or cabinet at a time, it doesn't overwhelm me. Now, you guys, you can get our undated planners in the description below. I think, are they 10% off? Yes. All right, 10% off right now. 400 pages, 365 days, undated, so that you don't lose any dates. This is the way I stay organized. I just continually, every day, do something little. Even when I was feeling bad with... Um, I have chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia, but even when I was feeling my worst with that, I mean, I'm feeling better now, but when I was feeling my worst with that, dead on the couch, mom and I call it commercial cleaning. I would get up. This was before we had streaming services and all that. Um, I would, uh, during each commercial, get up and literally do one thing during the commercial. I would put the laundry in the washer. The next commercial, I would load the dishwasher. The next commercial, I would move the laundry from the 
washer to the dryer. I would pick up just the coffee table and put everything where it goes. Little three minute bursts so that even if you're chronically ill, you are still able to keep a neat and tidy house. Now my house was not any of this minimalist stuff you see all over the place where there's nothing ever around. I had kids, I'm not a minimalist. I don't believe in minimalism. You're a maximalist. I think it's from Satan. Not really a maximalist. I am a maximalist. <laughs> but within, even with four to five kids, depending on how many we had, and with little toddlers and babies, I could at any even time tell everyone, okay, let's pick up the house. And within 30 minutes, the kids and I and Mike could have the house good enough for company to come. Yeah. We really could. So like if we were doing Christmas or Thanksgiving or whatever, we would spend 30 to 45 minutes right before everybody was coming, getting everything picked up, everything cleaned, all the bathrooms cleaned. And I mean, we're talking cleaning the bathrooms, putting up the dishes, getting all the dishes done, getting the floors sweeped, getting the laundry dealt with, put up away, whatever. And so there's no excuse to have an untidy house. You do not have to have a minimalist house where you have absolutely nothing in your house to have a tidy house. You don't. The thing is, is to always keep on top of it and always going. So like when I put my Christmas decorations out this year, um, I went through and I was like, okay, if I'm not putting this out, how long has it been since I put this out? Do I really need to keep it? Nope. I got rid of two boxes of Christmas decorations that I just don't use anymore. Now I do have a couple that are like really super old sentimental, like a nativity scene that was my grandma's, a couple of things like that, that I've kept, even though I don't put them out. If I find a place that I'll be able to put them out, then I will. And those things I really like, enjoy, but really that was like a half a box worth of stuff. Everything else is out now for my Christmas decorations. And as I go through to put everything up, I'm going to be looking at all my Christmas stuff again, saying, um, what do I not want anymore? Um, Probably the gnome tree. Go ahead and add that. Um, <laughs> the gnome tree. I will not get rid of the gnome tree. I love my gnome tree. I love my gnomes too much. <laughs> So, you know, and I don't know, I'll probably take my, so I, I keep a tree up all year. Well, not all year. I keep the tree up during the darkness of the year. So usually around the time change is when I take it down again. So I'm going to change the tree out to a snowman tree. And so then I put up all the snowman decorations. And then for Valentine's Day, I put up um, hearts and all that. Mm. Mm. Uh, lips. And, <laughs> you need to put up lips. <laughs> and then uh, I'll put up my St. Patrick's tree, and then I'll put up my Easter tree. And then some years, not a, not a lot, but some years I'll put up a gardening gnome tree for um, spring, summer. And then I start in the fall, put up my fall tree and all that. So I take down all the... I don't take down my tree, but I take down all the rest of the decorations. I used to do it on January 1st, but now, I don't know, sometimes I go to like January 14th or something like that. I don't know. It just depends. I'm not quite sure when I'm going to take them down this year. Just Every kind year of when says, I feel like it. She says, do you think I should take them down? Everybody's like, no. Yeah. The family yeah. doesn't want me to take them down. Yeah, I'd say... More often than not, she's made it through St. Patrick's Day, like through March. And a couple of years, she's gone beyond that. Easter is kind of a fun time to do that. Yeah. So, but I think one year you went all the way through June, didn't you? Yeah, <laughs> and it's I did. Light in June here. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing the tree thing. I know it's the in thing now, but I've been doing that for more than 20 years. <clears throat> I started when Dave was a baby. And um, so I've been doing that for years and years. But Guys, that's it. <laughs> one drawer, one cabinet, every single day. Don't do it on Sunday, but every other day. And just keep going. And you will get through everything. Even if you have a hoarder house. If you do that method, you will start getting through everything. And start with the trash. 
I am shocked at the number of people who just have trash laying around. There's no reason to just have trash laying around. By the way, put your comments and questions in the description and Mike will um, send them to me as soon as we get some. And um, while well, I finish my little rant here, but. Oh, you're ranting. I didn't know it was. Get the trash in the trash. I'm there is absolutely no reason to just be having trash laying around. I am kind of shocked about that because I know a lot of people I know, their biggest problem is just trash thrown everywhere. And we do have some family members that do that. <laughs> it's a little bit frustrating. They have their, been a, they have their um, strong points, <laughs> but not trash. So just throw your darn tootin' trash away. My goodness. It's like, you know, but Natalie says, I have lupus and RA, so sometimes I get overwhelmed, but I like the idea of committing to 10 minutes a day. I guarantee you, if you just spend 10 minutes or even just every commercial when you're laying on the couch, don't skip the commercials if you're watching something on YouTube. Let those commercials play. Give those people their ad revenue. Hint, hint. And... <laughs> <laughs> um, I can't say anything. I skip them too. So, but you know, give them their ad revenue and you get some cleaning done in that one to two minutes, you would be shocked how much you get done and make it a game. I had chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia. I know what pain is. I get it, but I could stand up for one to two minutes to get my dishwasher loaded. And I'm sorry, if you are so disabled that you literally can't do anything, then your house shouldn't be messy anyway. Because if you can't literally do anything, you're not up making messes. You're having a caregiver who's throwing away this stuff. So if you're able to get up and go do your business in the bathroom, on the way to and from the bathroom, you can at least clear off the top of the coffee table. You can at least go put the dishes in the sink for the next time when you go to load the dishwasher. You can at least restack that pile of magazines. And then the next time you can go through and decide which ones you're going to keep. And when Tara and Jill first started doing the commercial cleaning that she talks about, they were barely able to function at all, right? Yeah. Times where you just barely yeah. could get out. I could of, barely oh. get off the couch, but I did at least get off the couch and go put the dishes in the dishwasher, you know, or wash the dishes. At the time, I didn't have a dishwasher when I was that bad. But yeah, don't, Paul. I'm not saying watch the ads if they're nasty or anything. You just skip over those. I totally get that. But somebody said, "What kind of trash do people leave?" You'd be shocked. Well, Cough drop wrappers, gum wrappers, yeah, just not, little pieces of paper. They don't keep it because they want to, but like if. A lot of people that drink a lot of soda out of cans, they'll just yeah. leave the cans everywhere. Or a lot of people, I think, I don't know, I think it's more kids and teenagers, but like use all the cereal in the box and just put the box back <laughs> or leave the box on the counter somewhere. Yeah. And I think a lot of people just leave trash all over and dirty clothes too. Yeah. Or even clean clothes. Yeah. So like I find that if you do all the trash, and all the dirty clothes and put the dishes in the dishwasher. That's like 80% of That's it. That's a massive amount of it. <clears throat> and I used to have a friend that talked about sock spores. <laughs> like if you miss one sock when you're putting things in the laundry, it, it grows and becomes a lot more socks and other laundry. So we always joked about catching all the sock mm. spores. But now like for dishes, I'll go around and say, hey, any, any dish spores around here? Yeah. <laughs> we look all over in the public places in the house to see, is there a fork or a cup or a bowl somewhere? So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Mike's going to send me the first batch of comments. Guys, our Dining on a Dine cookbooks, 25% off in the description below. Volume one, volume two. If you need to start somewhere, start with volume one. Listen, these are easy recipes to get you in and out of the kitchen fast. These cookbooks go together, but can be used separately. They're totally separate recipes. They help you save money in your grocery bill. I guarantee it. Everybody who buys them has, I get testimony after testimonial. One lady just the other day said she sent, saved $250 their first trip to the grocery store. It happens all the time. 
gluten-free, dairy-free edition. If you're like me and have to be gluten-free, dairy-free, you don't have to eat rice, sandy food. If you're gluten-free, you can have actually good tasting food that is gluten-free. Believe me, it's delicious. I've tested all the recipes. And our undated planners, 400 pages, 365 days to help you get organized right now. 10% off to start the New Year's. We pre-packaged the planners today and we got inspired after we got done pre-packaging. And because we do all our shipping ourselves, and Mike and I got the garage cleaned. We really got a lot done. In we there. got like it, probably what eighty percent cleaned. We finally, after two and a half hours, had to stop. We we got a little bit done, but you know it'll be done before the weekend. Yeah, it's, it's mostly clean, but there are things like we have a workbench that, through the whole construction and a lot of projects since then, uh, it's not terrible, but it's kind of pile of stuff. So. Yeah, well, what happens is Christmas happens and we have our big Black Friday sale. And so then we had all of that and then we're moving in chairs and recliners and all that kind of stuff. And so um, so I um, <clears throat> was getting tired of it and I'm like, okay, we got to get this cleared out and cleaned up and organized and we did and it looks great we have a little bit more to do but after two and a half hours we were both a little but we kind of decided out. this week would especially be a week for that yeah and it's funny because i didn't do it last year but we used to stay up and watch new year's things on tv but of course they're not that great anymore so now it's more movies but what i found is i like to sit on new year's and grab a box and just open the box and say, do I really need any of this stuff? And look through there and grab another, or maybe just grab some boxes. Or if you didn't have boxes, you could grab like a, we actually would just take a drawer out at the kitchen mm -hmm. and take it over to the couch and organize yeah. it. So that's cool. Cause you can sit there and do it while semi watching something that doesn't need a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. So I like to do that. Yeah. All right, let's get to the questions here. Colleen, we will be praying for your daughter. I'm so sorry. So she's in the hospital. Um, we'll be praying for her. Oh, I forgot to tell you guys. So we had a very, speaking of being sick, we had a very <laughs> interesting Christmas. So I'll tell you that real quick uh, while we're thinking about it. So we had the show Wednesday. And Thursday morning, I found a recliner in Billings that I decided to go up. It was a Lazy Boy recliner. She wants 75 bucks for excellent condition. So I'm like, okay, I'm going up there in the new car. Oh, is that nice? <laughs> oh, I just zoomed along listening to my music. It was just beautiful. It's about two hours. Right? I've decided every Christmas Eve, I'm going on a four hour drive before Christmas <laughs> by myself. It was beautiful. Really helped the mental outlook. So, yes. Well, so right before I had left, we had decided that we were going to have Christmas that night because there was a storm coming in and the kids had to be home on Christmas Day. And they weren't sure if they were going to be able to make it out because in Wyoming, they can say two inches, but it very easily could turn into 10 inches. So, so I went to Billings on Thursday morning. Went to Walmart, which, by the way, is so much better than our Walmart. Found the rest of my Christmas presents at Walmart and Billings, of all places. <clears throat> Went and got my recliner. It's beautiful. I love it, but I can't use it, so now I have to turn around and sell it here. But you could probably sell it for more than you paid. I paid $75, but I think I can get $200 or $250 out of it because it's an excellent condition. I mean, there's not a scratch on it. So I think I can get two or two fifty dollars for it, but the arms are too low. And so when I sit, my back leans over and I, um, it hurts my, uh, it hurts my back to sit in it. So now I think we're going to repair the old recliner. Yeah. We're going to try and do that. So. One of the springs broke out, but it looks like there's just a little hook thingy on both sides or a little slot and the spring can do in there. And then you put in the other yeah. one. And the main thing is they're really firm springs yeah. so we're not sure if we can squeeze it enough to mm -hmm. get it hooked in the other side yeah but it's worth a try yeah especially since it's her it's kind of her favorite chair that yeah had in, sort of ever. yeah i've had it like 10 years now but um so then i so i went up to billings came back and quickly ellie started doing the jello salads and stuff uh for christmas dinner i 
zoomed back home. So I was gone, what, five hours? Zoomed back home, got the rest of the presents wrapped, got Christmas dinner made. So we had Christmas Thursday night. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Saturday, and then Friday morning. And so uh, while... Um, <laughs> While we were doing that, the kids were deciding, do we go? Do we not go? Because then the weather had changed again. And after BJ being in the tornado and all that, he's like, I don't want to take any chances. So they wanted to go. Poor BJ was horribly sick again. It, our house is like kryptonite to him. It seems like every year. It's like kryptonite. He's been, although it was nice that when he wasn't feeling good, he was able to... Um... <laughs> We have a really big jetted tub, and we don't usually use the jets, yeah. but he does. Yeah, he loves he the really jetted tub. The jets. So, so he sat in good. that, which really helped. He had the flu really bad, and so he was able to sit in the tub and help relax his muscles, so that really helped a lot. Our water bill probably went up $300 last week, <laughs> which is fine. I'm only exaggerating, guys. I'm just kidding. It, it probably went up. Ten dollars, if anything at all. I mean, the water is really I cheap here in Wyoming. Surprisingly, surprisingly, I didn't see the water, but he brought an electric car that was plugged into our house the whole time, and I was surprised that there wasn't any noticeable change in our electric. Oh, usage. really? Did we get it? Oh, okay. Although he was, he was going and plugging it in away from home where there are mm -hmm. fast chargers, so. And he was door dashing. They well, both both of them were door dashing were here, and they were all excited because I guess this is good door dashing. So they were absolutely loving that. But you guys want to hear what the mother in law points were? Remember, can you turn the camera, Mike? Turn the camera. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So here's what the mother in law points are. So we are looking for a recliner for Mike also because he had one that I got and it wasn't very good. It wasn't a lazy boy, and, and it's not a very good one. So. Our daughter said, Mom, I still have Dad's old recliner right here. See this one here? Our son-in-law. Oh, I forgot I'm the video. I forgot the video. Shoot. Okay, so our son-in-law loaded this thing into this. I ha I'll show a video, but I'll do it as a separate. Um, I'll do it as a separate video. But he loaded it into my daughter's little teensy tiny car. It's like a, is it a Mazda 2 or it's Mazda It's like a 3? little Mazda. It's a little bitty Mazda, like a Geo Metro size Mazda. And so, um, uh, there we go. Um, and so he, the top comes off, but he carried, this thing is heavy. He carried that thing down three flights of stairs. And I was like, I didn't mean for you to do this yourself. I just thought we could pick it up sometime when we're in Colorado because Ellie was like, I don't, um, I don't really use it. I feel bad taking dad's recliner. And I said, oh, well, if you don't want any more, maybe when we come down one time, we'll bring it back because dad really liked his old recliner that we got for free from the neighbor, but it's a lazy boy. And so, um, so our son-in-law packed that puppy in their little car and all the Christmas presents <laughs> and his luggage. His mother-in-law was impressed. He said, well, the wifey said I was supposed to bring it, so I brought it. <laughs> I was like, dude. Wow, he really fits well in this family. <laughs> That's above and beyond the call of duty, but it was very much appreciated. So how does it feel to have your recliner back? I really love it, actually. I didn't realize how much I rock in it. Yeah. I, the chair that we had that we bought near here when it was on Facebook marketplace was a little smaller and it was just kind of static. It had the leg things that would go up, but I realized right away why the guy didn't keep it because it's really small and, and for a, a normal size guy, you kind of have to push yourself out because it's just hard to get out of it. Yeah. But this one kind of rocks if you don't put the leg things up. So uh, there'll be times where I'm thinking real hard and I think, oh, wow, I'm actually rocking. So yep. Just like Christmas in Connecticut. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you guys know what we're talking about? <laughs> so we ended up having Christmas on Thursday night. And so Thursday night, we put up the, the uh, recliner for Mike with a great big bow. Were you happy? Yes. Well, it's funny because at first I didn't recognize what the deal was because they put a giant bow on it and they put a bunch of stuff on it also. 
so I didn't realize. Yep. Oh, wait, that's not the same chair. Oh, that is the chair from before. So I'm, I'm really impressed he could get it in the car, though. So Adam got Son-in-Law of the Year Award this year <laughs> for bringing uh, father-in-law's old old recliner back. So... So we so on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, we went to church twice on Christmas Eve because they had two services since it was on Sunday. And then we just sat and did nothing. It was actually pretty nice. I don't know. We ate leftovers. And it was pretty nice just sitting and doing nothing. We watched, let's see, Christmas Eve or one of those days. I don't know. We watched three movie, three Christmas movies one of the days. Was it Christmas Eve? It might have been. I don't know. I can't remember. But we went to, well, days. since Sunday was, since Christmas Eve was Sunday, they had what they called their regular Sunday service, but really it felt much like yeah. a Christmas yeah. service. And then we went out again for food. Yeah. And then we uh, went to the actual Christmas service. So there was like four hours of Christmas and yeah. it was super Christmassy feeling. Yeah. All nice. right, Connie, I will get to your question in just a moment here. All right, guys, while I'm, Mike's getting me the questions, I think he already emailed them to me, but all of our cookbooks, 25% off right now. Volume one, volume two, totally separate recipes, but can be used together or apart. And then our gluten-free, dairy-free edition, 25% off. And then 10% off on our planners, 400 pages, 365 days to help you get organized this year. But you don't lose any pages if you're like me and you use an organizer. And then you don't use it for a month. And then you use it if you're like, that's, I just love it when I don't waste pages. All right, getting to your questions. Hello, Aussie. Oh, dear. Is Australia flooding? I did not know Australia was flooding. I hope you're okay. And Edifying says, ADHD kicked in and I burned Christmas Eve dinner to a crisp. Plan B, Bethlehem dinner of cheese, crackers, nuts, raisins, veggie sticks. The kids thought it was fun and cheap. Oh, that's funny. You know, that's kind of what happened with us. Our Christmas dinner got cut in half because we didn't have time to prepare it. And it was actually still really nice. It, I mean, it, it turned out to be nice, but it was a little weird thinking, okay, in four or five more days, we're going to be doing Christmas and suddenly we're doing it tonight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Let's see. How is mom? Mom is doing um, so, so she's really super tired after taking care of grandma. She hasn't really slept for the last month or so. So she's taking off for a while. Um, I'm not having her do any videos or anything for a while. So she can rest, recover. Grandma is so, so we talked to her on Christmas day and she sounded really bad, but mom said she talked to her yesterday and she was kind of a little bit perkier. She said if she was a one on Christmas day, then she might be a two yesterday. So I don't know if grandma's finally getting over it or not. Amazing Grace Ranch. How's the forerunner doing? Oh, we love it. <laughs> Tara is like, <gasps> we love it. What did you say? I forgot what you said. There was a way you summarized that you didn't really necessarily know you were wanting to I didn't know I was missing out on anything by having a newer car. But wow, it was nice driving to Billings with everything working, being able to have an armrest. <laughs> the car just smoothly going down. Although I drove the Camry today to the th to, for the load for the thrift store and it's not that bad. I apologize for having a the, meltdown. The armrest thing. I'm sorry. The the middle <laughs> thing the cover for it broke off and we have to find one at a junkyard and so yeah. just in the list of projects that we haven't got it done yet up. mostly because mike's been driving it yeah and so i i just got to where i didn't notice it anymore. yeah but like you know we were fixing we spent See, eight I spent hours time fixing the kitchen cabinets thank instead. you which i do appreciate <laughs> so the contractors got the cabinets in, but there were some adjustments that needed to be made. And Mike's like, let's just not call them back. I'll just do it myself. Well, it ended up being eight hours worth of working on. A lot of adjustments. And... We had to get new parts because they were the drawers were too heavy for the kind of sliders we had. And, and some of them, it seemed like they were a little further apart. I, the space was a little further apart than the drawer. So we had to make some adjustments. And that was a lot harder than yeah. I thought. <laughs> Yeah. We've so, done a lot of construction stuff over the years, but drawer sliders is my, the uh, bane of nemesis. my existence. But you got them all fixed now. Yes. Thankfully. So they are all fixed. The kitchen is official. No, the kitchen isn't officially done because we have to put up the tile still. 
but we got the, the kitchen is 95% done. So Thankfully, yeah. at least the tile is decorative, right? It's not particularly yeah. functional. Yeah. Mary says she showed her neighbor her two freezers. She said, Mary, don't buy any more food. It, it was on sale. You go, girl. That is fine. Just keep using it and rotating out. That's great that you're getting it on sale. Happy birthday, Rebecca. My birthday is the second. She doesn't take down the decorations before the following weekend. Yeah, I always leave my decorations up at least until January 1st. And I used to be dogmatic about taking them down January 1st. And I, I may this year. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. So um, let's see. Valentine in the Badlands says, Tara, Old English Christmas. 12 days starting 24th to January 4th. Yeah, I thought about that also. Mm-hmm. Um, prudently, is there anyone who has a problem getting rid of books? Help. So I used to have a problem with that. I don't anymore. Getting rid of books? Yeah. This last move, I was like, you know what? If I'm not reading it, I'm done. And they're going out. And I got rid of, I moved three boxes worth of books that I shouldn't have moved. I was pretty disappointed in myself. But, you know, when you're in the stress of moving and you're getting decision fatigue and you're just like, I don't know if I should take this or not. Am I going to read it? And so then what I did, here's what I did. And this may help you prudently is I put all the ones that were questionable, I put them on this bookshelf. Then as I read them, I moved them to the other bookshelf. If I wanted to read them again, like we like Grace, mom and I like Grace Livingston Hill books. So I will never throw those away because I just read them over and over again. So then I moved those over to the red shelf or straight into the Goodwill box. Then just go through the stack and if there's some that you just keep skipping over, they need to just go straight into the thrift, to the thrift store box. Just get rid of them. If you keep them. thinking, I'm yeah. not sure, I'm not sure, then it's no. Yeah. You, you know, for me, I used to hate to get rid of books. And then I was thinking, you know, if you give it to a library or a thrift store, somebody else is going to read mm -hmm. it. So it's not like it's being wasted. Yeah. But for me, I would always think, can I find this book at a library or can I get it again if I really regretted it being gone? Yeah. And if I can, and I don't, I haven't read it in a, a lot of years and I'm not going to read it right now, I'll just give it away. Mm -hmm. the, the ones that I've occasionally saved are ones that are totally out of print and there's nowhere I can get them. And they're like family genealogy is in there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Something yeah. unusual like that. Yeah. Yeah. Joyce says I took half days this week work working on her craft room so far she's put 15 hours to sort purging and organizing i have a pile for local consignment and another for donate good job and just keep it moving out just keep it going i don't care how you get rid of it just get rid of it and that's kind of what we're doing this week is we took off work this week i know we're doing the show but we're not probably maybe not i don't know i haven't i have an after christmas sale video that i may or may not put out on saturday but we're taking off this week and um getting those little things like the kitchen cabinets finished and off our mind so that they're just fixed and done. The little and irritations. So, yeah, those I little just... irritations in life that drive me nuts. And it's funny because as we're doing the little irritations, we discover other ones, the smoke detector from the construction. Yep. Yeah. It's, we have a smoke detector that it's still active, but it's laying on a cabinet because when the contractors were doing a dusty thing, it set it off in the fire department. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we just yeah. never put it up yet. All yeah. the rest of them are up, but. Can you send me the next batch? Yep. Um, let's see. The lamp in the background, that was, so my dad gave that to my grandmother and my grandmother died. And then six months later, my dad died. And so I, didn't get anything from my dad's estate. <clears throat> Trying not to be angry. Um, <laughs> so I asked my aunts and uncles if I could have, there's this lamp and then I have one other lamp you guys saw by the recliner. That's a really neat lamp. Um, those two lamps, I asked if I could at least have those since my dad gave that to my grandmother. So that's all I got for my inheritance. It's more than I'm going to get. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Our inheritance is in heaven with the Lord. I was going to say, 
we have inheritance that's greater. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, okay. <clears throat> Agnes, I am a, on a mission to empty my house. Well, I don't know that you need to empty it, but yes, I would be on a mission to at least get rid of everything you're not using. Well, it's funny because when I saw that, I was thinking... <laughs> When both of my grandmothers, different times, at different times, died, they both left a huge amount of stuff that the family had to sort through, and it was just collections of things that they thought they cared about, but they really didn't. <laughs> and I realized, man, that was such a big deal for them. And my mission for them is, since then has been, when I go, I'd like to just have everything in a suitcase. <laughs> Not there yet, but I'm just like... And I'm making up for all the rest of it. How can we reduce... <laughs> Although the thing with when Taurus is making mine up the is rest. household stuff like decorations and stuff though. Well, so. first of all, there's household stuff like the utility things you use yeah. every day, chairs and tables and blenders and things. Yeah. But Tara really is an amazing decorator. Oh, thanks. You're welcome. And I realized the house is super pleasant because of that. And that stuff, there's a lot of that. Yeah. But. Well, and I do have my soap making stuff, but all of that could be condensed into about six or eight boxes probably. And I'm already starting to go through some of that stuff. So the nice thing yeah, is you yeah. don't have boxes and boxes of paperwork like a lot of people have. Man, mm -hmm. paperwork, that's what I'd sit on the couch, quickly go through it while a TV show is on yeah, and just start yeah. checking it. <laughs> exactly. Uh, let's see. Kimberly says, I'm going to be eating out of my pantry and freezers for about two months. Good job. Was not Kimberly's the best grocery audit to end on? Oh my goodness. I was so excited to do Kimberly's grocery audit because she just embodied everything we're talking about and showed yeah. how it just works so well. I just was so impressed, Kimberly. So good. So now you're going to save a few hundred bucks by just eating out of your pantry and getting getting that used up and then you can restock again. Kimberly says I do a top clean for about 10 minutes daily where I make sure beds are made, floors, and don't have anything on them and dishes done. Yes, that's what we do too. Mm -hmm. If somebody stops by, I'm not embarrassed. Yes, that's what we do too. Uh, what is my favorite brand of tea? Uh, so my favorite brand is actually... Uh, there's a couple of English, like real England English teas. I love English breakfast teas. English breakfast, real English teas. Is that how I say it? So, yeah. Um, all right. Let's see. What is that blue one? The Aries. Earl Grey that people have said. Oh, the blue Earl Grey? I don't know. Uh, Twinings. No, that was no, Twinings. I really, really like Twinings yeah. Earl Grey. I but think that a, was a different, it's an organic twin. There's a blue one. It's the organic one, a pack yeah. that a number of people have sent. And it's actually good too. I think it's the organic twinings. I'm pretty sure. I thought it had a different name on it. Anyway. Is it? Um I gave Picard Oh, maybe not. Okay. For, I don't know. Oh, here it is. No, Harney and Sons. Oh, that's the one I love too. That viewer sent me. Oh. It's Harney and Sons. Is yeah. It Harney and Sons? Yeah. Oh, because that is good. Harney tea. and Sons is really good tea. A viewer sent me a couple of those from New York where they make it. And that one's really good too. That English breakfast one is really good too. Okay, put in your questions, guys. We will get them. Mike's sending me the next ones. Um let's see. Yeah, don't get overwhelmed, Paula, by the commercials. Just use it as you're cleaning and then you can skip them and move on. Which stevia is the healthiest? Uh, pretty much all of them. Stevia is stevia, so I don't think it really matters. What do you use clothespins in your kitchen for? What? Oh, for me? You only... I don't use them. I use them for, like, if I cut open a bag of frozen broccoli and eat some of it and put the rest back in the freezer, I'll just clip it off. It drives me nuts if we just put the stuff in the freezer and somebody's moving stuff around and everything falls out of it in the freezer. So I, I usually have three different kinds of vegetables open and I have a clothespin on each one. Yep. <laughs> so. And I hate the clothespins. It drives me nuts. I find clothespins all over the kitchen. Well, the other so thing I finally is... just found a place in the drawer that I can put them. <laughs> the other thing is uh, the toothpaste. Tara's taught me a long time ago 
instead of trying to keep squeezing it out once it just won't squeeze out, just cut the end off. But I will close pin the end so that the toothpaste doesn't get all over the drawer. <laughs> yep. So I keep a few in the bathroom too. Yep. How old is Jack? He's 14. Yes, he's a barista at church and he discovered he likes espresso. And so Ellie found, we had something else for him, a Christmas present, and he wanted an espresso machine. I'm like, that thing's 150 bucks. Well, Ellie, before they came up, she found one on Facebook that a lady was giving away for free. It was like 120, 150 bucks or something. And she'd only used it a few times. It was almost brand new. And so she got it for free for him. So we got him the accessories to go with it. Bounty in the Badland, I don't see the vanilla to drink after the PTA meeting in the drink drawer. <laughs> That's because it's in my baking drawer. <laughs> Yeah. I have sworn off PTA meetings. Unless I go to film, if you guys want to see Tara's head explode off her shoulders, you think I'm bad on here. Oh, my goodness. I think my tongue bleeds at every PTA meeting. We absolutely love everyone at our PTA meeting. You can feel school. the simmering happening over there. But... <clears throat> I, I am a minimalist when it comes to school functions. I am a minimalist when it comes to full school functions and kids' activities. So we'll just put it that way. Yeah. Wait, so um, the last part you said? I'm a minimalist when it comes to school functions. Oh, yes. Well, actually, what's funny is... I don't think kids need all this baloney that schools do nowadays. We, got, we also have an interesting little dynamic between us that I went to, I have, I went to college, got a degree worked at two colleges, learned a lot about, there's sort of a language that a lot of colleges, well, people use at colleges that I kind of think it's mostly to show that you you have a superior education. <laughs> and Tara's been like super no nonsense about stuff. And so whenever we deal with somebody who starts doing that, she basically passes them off to me. <laughs> I, I let him use his college ease to I don't, talk them under the table. And I then... don't normally talk that way, but I know how to speak the language. <laughs> so it's kind of a funny thing where yeah. if she, something's, if she's just completely feeling like, yeah. I, just, I don't want to deal with this at all. I'll take it over and it'll be brilliant. <laughs> Sarah, where do the cloth, cloth, clothing moths come from? How do they get enclosed? So the moths get in the house and then they lay eggs and then the eggs hatch and that's what makes the holes in there. So primarily... just put cedar. It's usually in the South a lot more. I've never had moths living in Kansas and Colorado and Idaho and Texas, but I know a lot of people do. Do they so... come for anything besides wool? I don't know. I, I've only I have no any... idea. I thought there I was know. just wool, so. Kimberly says, I solved that problem of garbage by putting a trash can in every single room. Yes, I have a trash can in every single room, and some rooms have multiple trash cans. Like our bathroom, we have a trash can by the toilet, and we have a trash can by the sink. I have a trash can by my recliner for all those little bits of sewing threads and little pieces of paper, cough drops. I put it in there. I have... Two in our office, one on each side of the desk, one by the printer, and then one where Mike pays the bills. Why? Make it easy to get rid of your trash. Put one by your bedside for all those Kleenexes, cough drop wrappers. And what I do is I just put 10 or 12 Walmart sacks in the bottom of the uh, trash can. Then as I take out that sack that has the trash in it, then I just put a new liner in every week. It'll last me about three months, and then I refill three months later. Make it easy on yourself. Make it very easy. Well, and I don't know if you got to that one yet, but somebody said something about trash cans in every room that she would think it would be germs. But it's only germs if you put, like, food what are in there. What going to do, jump out and get you? Well, if you put food in there and then you leave it for weeks and weeks, then that would be bad. Yeah, no. But typically what we're using it for is, here's a sock with a hole in it and we're not gonna repair yeah. it. Um, here's a Band-Aid I just took off, here's whatever. All those things go in the bathroom or sometimes uh, the bedroom is mostly, there's one in the bedroom by the closet and Tara will, if she, if there's a piece of clothing that's- not, Like a pair of underwear that's gotten stretched out, I'll throw them in there, it's a not sock good that's enough. got a hole in it. It's not, don't, it's not the thing you donate and it's not really good enough for any yeah. purpose except 
tags from the thrift store, take off the clothes. Hanger, coat hanger that breaks. Mm -hmm. Those things go in. So we have we have trash cans in all different places in the house. And then on trash day, usually I'll get one of the boys and say, you go get the ones downstairs. I'll get the ones upstairs. And Yeah. Although we don't have nearly as much trash as we had when we had two other people living. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Our trash um, is always half full. BJ and Ellie are here. <laughs> Even well, without was, Christmas. Even without Christmas. Our trash was overflowing <laughs> before Christmas started. Um, it's funny because we always thought it was us. <laughs> So it's funny how having two extra people just quintuples your trash. Um, I'll get to the Timu thing. I'm going to answer that question because I do have an opinion on that. But let me get to the other questions here. Marilyn says, I keep my house clean, but my husband hoards things in the basement and garage. His worst is bags and boxes. Why do we need to keep the box for everything? Yeah. So here's my rule on the box. Like today, we were cleaning the garage. I got a new hydro vac for mopping <laughs> instead of mopping. And I told Mike, Mike was like, do you want me to dump this? I'm like, oh... Well, yeah, I said, no, wait, I think I have another month on the return policy. So in case something happens, let's keep it for one more month. Then next month, it's going in the trash after my return time is gone. I don't keep the box. Why? I keep it for the return time. Like for the Christmas presents, we got, you know, like some electro not electronics, but like an alarm clock and like a little drone, stuff like that. I put those in a basket on top of the freezer. I'm going to wait until January 31st when I can return them to Amazon if they break between now and then. On February 1st, they're going into the trash. The, re the freezer's right next to the trash can, so I can just dump them straight in there. There's no reason to keep all that stuff. Natalie, I have great days, but now and then a few days barely being able to move. Exactly. So just keep going on the days that you can move, and then, then on the days you don't, well, don't worry about it. Just keep going and doing what you can. Mm -hmm. The thing, um, oh, the thing on the boxes. So you're, you're done with that comment, right? The thing on the boxes is, I don't, I didn't hear you say it, but we have a, a shelf in the garage that's higher up. And if it's like a shop vac or some kind of thing like that, we'll put the box on that shelf until the return time is expired. Yeah. And then we'll toss the, I'll get rid of the box on tra mm -hmm. trash day. I'll throw it in the recycling. Yeah. Thing. And then downstairs, uh, well, we have an office where if it's an electronic item and it has a little well, bit Well, like longer, our computers, if we have to return our computers to be fixed, we do keep those. Computers and phones and other yeah. office equipment, uh, I will keep the box until the time to return it is over in there. But I have a specific spot that's only empty boxes, boxes and every few months I go in and purge all the ones that are new. And the same thing with uh, old uh, manuals for things. <laughs> we used to have a, a manuals folder that I, I'd go through it every now and then and realize, well, we haven't had that thing in five years. <laughs> so yeah. the manual. So I, we try to go through all those like once a year and get rid of everything. Um, question, what vitamins do you take for fibromyalgia? My friend in Canada has it bad and he's always in pain, but he pushes through the pain. He keeps his apartment spotless. Okay, so I have multiple videos on this. Go do a search for chronic fatigue syndrome or fibromyalgia and go through the whole, go through those, send them those videos. And that's what I do. Now, what have I gotten to what I've done now. So first of all, I went to a functional medicine doctor. I found out I had two pretty bad infections. I was on antibiotics for three months, getting rid of those infections. And that helped a little bit. That helped me about 30 to 40%. So what am I on now? I'm on vitamin D. I am on NADH, vitamin C, omega-3s, magnesium turate NAC. Did I say NADH? Yes. That's the one that that helps the most. Yeah, that one gives me the most energy. We didn't energy. think it was doing anything and then she quit it and it became yeah. obvious. This was like 25 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> so the NADH, if I could only pick one, it would be the NADH. But um, then I also take a moringa. I just started moringa and it's actually giving me more energy and helping with some of my pain. Um, that's a big one that a lot of people uh, help. But the biggest thing that helps me the most, if I don't take any, um, oh, thanks, Wendy, for the Bible ministry. Yes, thank you, thank you very much. Um, we will get those Bibles sent out. Um, <clears throat> the biggest thing that helps me the most is a food elimination. 
So I did a food elimination diet or I did a food allergy test and then I eliminated those foods. So I don't do dairy. I don't do gluten, gluten-free, dairy-free right here. That's why I wrote this because this is what I eat right here. But I also cut out sugar. And if I cut out sugar, that's a big one for me that causes a lot of my pain. So dairy, wheat, and sugar are the three big ones that I cut out Sugar's and help also. The yeah. Biggest of a problem for you. Gluten and sugar are the two biggest ones. Dairy gives me a headache, but I could deal with that. Um, and I'm not perfect on it. Like I had some fudge over Christmas. I didn't have a lot this time because this year I actually controlled myself and only had a couple of pieces. But, you know, those are the big things that does it for me. And then exercising exercising really helps. Even if you're just sitting on the couch doing old lady exercises, do it because exercising is really a big thing. I know you think you hurt too much to exercise, but what happens is when you don't exercise, your muscles have nothing left and you can't get that stuff moved out of your body. And then it just kind of gets trapped in there and it causes pain. So if you can exercise, even if it's very lightly, do some exercise. It's very, very important. All right. Uh, Terry says we began one decluttering, organizing effort, condensing cleaning products. Yes. Get all of your cleaning products. Now I do clean cleaning products, a full set in each bathroom and under the kitchen sink and in the laundry room. So I keep cleaning products in every room where I'm going to be cleaning, but at the same time, I don't just keep over buying cleaning products. So I'll just use one cleaner and just get it used up and then use the next one. Um, let's see. Yay. Missy said her husband is dropping off stuff at the Salvation Army tomorrow. That is great. Listen, if you can't get to the thrift store or whatever, I'm okay with you dumping it in the trash. Just get it out of your house. It's fine if you're able to take it to the thrift store or whatever. But sometimes you're not able to just get it in the trash and get it out of your house. It is not worth the stress of worrying about trying to get it to the thrift store or put it on the curb with a free sign. It's okay to put it on a curb with a free sign. I have done that all the time. People take it all the time. Um, Bounty of the Badlands says I have specific tasks for specific days. Yep, exactly. That's, that's a great way to do it. Um, Monday, I have a lot of old insurance papers and stuff to throw away. Yep, we go through that about once a year. Nicole says, I can't wait to get my new planner she got from Living on a Dime for 2024. Yay, guys, grab your planners now. We only, we have 200 left. I totally misspoke the other day. <clears throat> when we went to uh, clean the garage today, we found a palette that we didn't know we had. So we have 200 planners left. <laughs> our organization in our shipping department kind of got a little out of hand. It improved today, though. <laughs> but it's totally improved today. Um, but we have 200 left and no, at this point, we are not reprinting at this point. Uh, well, we'll see, but we're not reprinting. We're, it's actually a shipping issue that we're having. So, all right. Susan says, my husband said not to handle an item twice. Yes. Don't pick it up and put it down. Deal with it immediately. Yes. That is a great, that is great. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> Vicky, Vicky says what we found to be true too, but not here, but she says in my neighborhood, if I put free signs, nobody will take it. But if I put up a sign with $20, someone will steal it. Do it. Her brother do it. lived in a neighborhood <laughs> where, yeah, we, we put a chair out and it was $5 and nobody, or no, it was free and nobody would take it. But yeah, for five bucks, then they stole it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yep. Teresa says, another good thing I do is the grandkids have a certain day for laundry. If it's not in the laundry room by six, then they have to wait till the next week. Very good. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Um, Robin, I am a moderator of Facebook group with people with depression. Thus, many have trouble getting out of bed, self-care, etc. I tell them to take a plastic grocery bag and fill it with trash each day. Probably takes two to three minutes. You do that little bit for a week, you can make a dent. I was surprised that you advocate the same thing you organize. Oh, Depression as an excuse for not getting something done really ticks me off. I don't care if you're not motivated. Do it anyway. More days than not, I'm not motivated. Stop making excuses that just because you're depressed, you can't do this or you can't do that. Well, suck it up, buttercup, and do it anyway. 
I'm not saying this for you, but I mean, that's what I tell people who are depressed. Get your butt up and do something. That's usually why you're depressed because you're not doing anything. Now, I know I'm going to get a thousand letters. Well, you don't know what clinical depression is. Yes, I do. So don't give me this malarkey. I absolutely do know what it is. And you know what? I get my butt up and do at least three things every single day. At least. And every single day, the dishes are done no matter what. The bed is made before I even go to the bathroom. I make the bed. It literally takes me 20 seconds to make the bed. I pull up the sheet and the comforter together, lay them down, put the pillows on, and it's done. Literally 20 seconds. All the trash is dealt with every day. You can do something. I don't care how depressed you are. You can get your buns up and do something. So that is very good, Robin, that you are telling them to do that. I'm proud of you. All right. Thank you, Esther. Likes my hair. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> Susie says, my son drove around for a year with a recliner in the back of his small SUV. He had moved and never took it out. Okay, seriously? Dude, <laughs> do the little things. <laughs> get the little things done. My goodness. <laughs> well, if he was a teenager uh, or a young 20, I wouldn't be too surprised. A lot of guys at that age are kind of like, eh. Really Can you send me the next one? Julia yes. says, I bought a 2017 RAV4 and love it. What year is our former runner? Ours is 2015, and so far we are loving it. We are also probably looking for a RAV4 or maybe a Tacoma also. Uh, Dave needs a vehicle, so we're looking for him. Mom really needs a vehicle, but she doesn't want to get one. So we're looking, though, because... I think we need to be looking. <laughs> yeah, for her car, the bailing wire is just not working out so well anymore. <laughs> no, but... it's not. Uh, Giggles says but we got... she doesn't. She doesn't want another one. It's not yeah, us. she doesn't want one. It's not us. Giggles <laughs> says we got turkeys for twenty-five cents a pound in California. Very good. Good job. That is a great deal. That is a great deal, guys. Before I get to the next questions, check out our cookbooks, 25% off right now. If you have fibromyalgia and you need a gluten-free, dairy-free cookbook right here. Now, this does have sugar in it. This is not sugar-free. This is dairy-free and gluten-free, but you can easily substitute sugar substitutes if you want. And then this is our volume two is the blue one and our volume one of our Dining on a Dime cookbooks, 25% off right now, guys. Save money. Easy recipes get you in and out of the kitchen quick. I have another channel called Super Easy Recipes. That's my other YouTube channel. Thank you all of you for, for your support in that. It is doing phenomenal. Um, <clears throat> and I'm cooking through the cookbook because the recipes are so stinking easy. People need to know how easy they are to get in and out of the kitchen. Leanne, what is NADH? I have fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue syndrome. I hit a wall because doctors understood me. But now when I go back and ask for things to get me through, like cortisone shot or something, they say they can't do it because it has to be arthritic, swelling, et cetera. Okay, so NADH. So with chronic fatigue syndrome, the big problem is, what's it called? Memory loss. Memory loss. <laughs> Wait, wait. Your mitochondria. Okay. What happens is your mitochondria basically shuts down and is not functioning properly. And so your mitochondria is not getting the energy you need. NADH is an amino acid, I think. I'm not positive. I think it's an amino acid that um, helps give you energy with that. Now, um, I would say that if you're having pain with your fibromyalgia, seriously look into the food. Guys, the food does make a big difference. Now, I'm not going to tell you to go keto or carnivore or whatever. Right now, I'm doing a high-carb, high-fat diet because that's what I'm feeling the best on. <laughs> so <clears throat> we'll see how it goes. But right now, I'm eating toast and butter because that's what feels good. When I eat, I don't, it doesn't make me sick. So that's what I'm eating right now. But do an elimination diet and figure out what foods are making you worse. Uh, Matilda's Merry Christmas. I'm in Sweden on a rare vacation. You would not believe how beautiful it is. Yes, I would. I have been to Sweden and I absolutely loved it. 
It was not that far of a drive for us from Denmark. Oh, wow. Yeah, I absolutely love Sweden, so I can totally guess how beautiful it is. Founding the Bad Land, we have a free library box at our community hall. There you go. The ones I don't keep go in there, and then she grabs some. Yeah, Mom and I keep the books rotating out. The only books we really keep are, are Grace Livingston Hill and Betty Neal's books and SC Summer books. Those are the ones that we only keep. So, well, And doesn't our library have a really big mm -hmm. box of books that you can just trade. Yep. Mm -hmm. I see. I, I, if I go take my work to the library, I'll frequently see Jill come in there and go in there and check out all the books in that mm -hmm. box. Yep. Um, and usually she comes up and says hi to her son. How do you handle the room, the kids' rooms declutter? So here's how I handle it. Every birthday and every Christmas before the holiday, I tell the kids, told the kids, before new presents can come in, we have to get everything decluttered so we can make room for the new presents that are coming. I sat there with them. I did not, well, when they were really little, I did, but when they turned about three or four, I did not throw anything away. They always got the choice of what they got to throw away. So I would hold up a toy, keep or go? Keep, okay, keep or go? Go, keep or go, keep or go. And we just went through everything in their room, including their clothes. I started for me when the kids' rooms were overwhelming because they were just a pit and I wasn't able to keep on top of keeping on top of them. I would start with their closet first because I knew how to deal with the clothes. Everything that we were keeping, they hung up and put up everything that was too small. We got out of there, got the next size down if we were exchanging sizes because I had three boys, so I kept a big box and going down. Um, <clears throat> and then um, the toys, it would just be keep, go. They got to make the decision, but they had to get rid of some stuff before new stuff could come in because there was not room to just keep stuff coming in all the time. So that's how I did it. And my kids' rooms would become pits every now and then, you know, once or twice a year. But we would just go through, spend about 30, 45 minutes, and it would be all done. I mean, it really didn't take that long. So, um, well, and also, I don't think you said it, but if they got a massive amount of stuff at Christmas when they were little, it was like uh, overwhelming to them. Mm -hmm. So, we would rotate in like give them the newest, the things that they were the most excited about that they got, and hold off the rest of them for a little while. Even they'd see it all on Christmas, but then they would only only certain amount certain things would get to their rooms, and then after they seemed to be bored with that, then Tar would rotate out and give them some of the things that um, that they hadn't originally played with, but now they absolutely loved them. Yeah. So that that mm -hmm. was kind of a cool idea too. Karen says Tar and Jill were talking about watching the purchases ring up. Cash there, she found Q fall top marked down from nine ninety five to a dollar. I decided to watch it being rung up. It was still nine ninety five. I pointed out. She didn't seem concerned at all. I told her I didn't need it. Well, I would have insisted on that price. Yeah, I watch because Walmart does this to me almost every time. I would say 90% of the time when I buy stuff on clearance at Walmart, it does not ring up right. To the point that now I just take a picture of it. Like when I went to Billings, they had evaporated milk for 50 cents a can. I took a picture of it, grabbed me a case of it. And took it home with me just in case. It, now, that one thankfully did ring up correctly. But just in case it didn't, then I had it. Kimberly says, I only got a few sentimental things from my mom and dad. Unfortunately, they both died without wills and no life insurance. I've given my children everything that they want. So anything that's left in the house, they said they'll go through. But most of it's probably going to be hitting the estate sale. Don't ever save anything just in case you think somebody might want it. Yeah, because they probably don't want it in the first place. Yeah. So, Julie, I don't understand people that get upset about inheritance. I hate the thought of arguing or fighting over past loved ones, possessions, or money. Okay, so for me, because that that should that inheritance should have gone to me. Now, I'm not throwing a fit or anything, but my dad never paid a dime of child support. The least he, the least that could have happened was we could have gotten that inheritance. That's the least that could have happened for my dad never paying child support. So that's the way I kind of look at it. Um, but it's their money anyway. And so, you know, 
If that's the way it goes, that's the way it goes. Oh, Jeannie, thank you for the $20 super chat. Yes, thank you, Jeannie. I appreciate Aww, it. Oh, that's great. We appreciate it. <laughs> uh, Melody, I love roasted dandelion tea and herbal teas. Oolong is good. Yes. I don't really like herbal teas as much as I just like good old English breakfast. That's my number one favorite. But um, the Hardy and Sons, the, there was a couple that were sent that she sent me that were that were really good. But I still, I would say my number one favorite is... Um, the English breakfast. Uh, actually, uh, on the uh, I forgot the inheritance thing. Uh, I for me, my thing is I mostly would just like some sentimental thing. Um, not a, I mean it, 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 I do think it's reasonable, you know that you kind of think about everybody with what you're doing with the valuable things. But for me, it's the sentimental things that mean something really. And that's kind of what I wish that I had from like my grandparents and stuff. So. Yep. Um, Cheryl, do we eat black eyed peas on New Year's? No, it is a Southern thing. We do not. Stephen Libby. I have. Libba. Yeah. Cause you're from the South. Yep. Can you do a show dealing with paperwork? So we've done a video on that several years back. Just, just, look up paperwork but the basic rule is um keep a tax folder for everything that needs to go for taxes and then stuff like water bills and stuff like that we just put them in a file oldest at the front newest at the back or vice versa however you want to do it and then at the end of the year we just take the whole clump out shred it or throw it away same with water bills insurance bills um, the only things you need to keep long-term are like deeds to your houses, insurance policies, car titles, um, Those things your tax keep. records for seven years, but yeah, five to seven years, depending on whether you're personal or business on tax records. Um, and there was something else we had a long, long time ago when we were still trying to get out of the credit card problem, we had a credit card that we closed and like three years later, we got a bill because somebody had reopened the card and was charging on it. So after that, we had a big ordeal fighting with them over it. So after that, we asked every time we closed one, we would ask for a letter saying this is closed. Mm -hmm. And, and we keep we've all kept those. those forever. Yeah. We have a file that we've never, ever gotten rid of those because we want to be able to say, hey, I closed it. I don't know what's going on here, but y'all need to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so she gave her daughter my gluten free cookbook and she was thrilled. She couldn't put it down. She said it has revived her interest in cooking. Yes. Actually, guys. Gluten-free, dairy-free cooking is super, super simple. It does not have to be complicated at all. So get the green book if you're gluten-free, dairy-free like me, and that will help you with your cooking. Uh, Mandy, off topic, but do I need to soak beans when making bean soup? Yes, it helps if you can soak them overnight. It does help a little bit. Um, you don't have to. You can put them in the Instant Pot or something, but it does help. Um... Bonnie says here in Canada, the English love Tetley tea. Yes, I did that one. You that was pretty good. Tetley mm -hmm. tea, you? What did we have when we were yep. over there? In England? Yeah. I mean, I, I think... had a red box. Oh, let me see. Oh, um, was the Irish tea? No, this was, um, let's see. The one. Oh, shoot. It was, I found it in Massam. It was across the street and it was super good. I love that one. It was called, um, oh shoot. What was the name of it? It started with an H. I still kept the package in case I want to buy it. Uh, you're talking about Harrogate? No. Yeah. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. That was it. See, I got the Twilight Twinings Earl Grey in 1986 in London, and I was like, this is awesome. Yeah, so, that was Harrogate or something. That it's was something in Harrogate, and I that think I just really... saw it up above. Oh, you did? Uh, closer to the top. It was really super, super good. Um, what? Do you remember the brand of tea that Crystal had? I don't. She didn't serve the Yorkshire tea, did she? I don't know. But anyway, yeah, so that was really good, too. Um, okay, let's see. 
Uh, Tara, Alicia says, I asked my husband if it's okay to do a year round tree like you do. He surprised me by saying that's a great idea. I guess we are rubbing off on them. Taylor, Aww. That's awesome. Yay. Actually, I saw that too. And I was like, yes, that's a good idea. Oh, yeah. Taylor's of Harrogate. Yeah, Taylor's of Harrogate. That was, oh, that's probably the number one best pee ever. Yeah, that's really, really good. Yeah. Well, you also were really loving, what was the one the, from Ireland that you were always asking for? Uh, berries. Oh, no. Um, Fallons. That's really good well, too. You had but, berries and Fallons. Yeah. Fallons from Ireland was super, super good. I wish I would have filled my suitcase with that now. <laughs> I'm kind of disappointed because that was really good. Debbie says Red Rose was <clears throat> her grandmother's favorite. Yeah. I, I discovered Red Rose in British Columbia mm -hmm. and brought it back for Tara. Yeah. <laughs> Kathy decluttered and had a garage sale last fall. You go girl. That is great. She's going through more now. Nancy, I am not planning on reprinting the planners right now. We have about 200 of these left, but 10% off right now, guys, 400 pages, 365 days. We are actually having a bit of a shipping issue with the planners. And so that's at the moment until we can figure that out, we're not quite sure what to do. So if you love our planners, please grab one. Uh, can you send me the next batch? Shipping uh, to us. Yeah. Is the problem. Yeah. Cheryl, would you ever order anything from Timu? No, I would not. Um, I don't know about their products, nothing. Their business practices are extremely sketchy. Extremely sketchy. Um, I heard from a very good source, a reliable source, that they are um, doing things with your info that's not real good. Now, Having said that, though, pretty much any company that wants to get your info now can pretty much get your info off your phone. Any app, anything like that, pretty much. Isn't Timu owned by the Chinese government? Yeah. Though? And that's that's, that's why I'm not on TikTok either. a similar either. problem with the TikTok yeah. thing. That's why I'm not on TikTok. But also, they offer amazingly low prices, but many of the people that I've heard have found that the quality of it is not as good as the amazingly low prices. <laughs> so yeah. somebody was saying, yeah, Amazon has bad products from China too. And they do. But the thing about that is Amazon's model is some things, if you look at it, it says like sold and shipped by Amazon. But then other ones say it has the name of some company that's the seller and then it's maybe shipped by Amazon. And those there are all different kinds of sellers, but what's been popular in a recent couple of years is the Chinese factories create um, listings on Amazon and sell directly. And it looks like it's coming from Amazon, but it's not. And we noticed there was one that, oh, that was through Facebook though, that had like 15 different names of companies and they were being scammy on all of them. And Tara ended up getting kind of scammed on that. And we had an early fight with the credit card to make sure that we got that taken off. Well, Nikki says, but, Tara, would you ever do a switch away program to only buy American made products? That's not possible anymore. America does not make enough products that's the problem that you is, could to have your life be a normal average life and only buy American. It's just not possible. Well, and we do like American products, but like certain categories of products, you can't find anything. I wouldn't buy an American car. Well, that is true. On the cars, well, we used to buy, we used to, well, we would buy whatever would come up in the price range we were looking for, but we had a lot of Fords. And do we have Chevys too? We had Fords, we had Chevys, we had, we had Nissan. The, the Pontiac was nice, but that's the one I drove over the cliff. Yeah, Pontiac wasn't too bad. So we didn't have it long But enough. our Toyotas are the only cars that we haven't had to do major repairs on. Yeah, it's actually been, the thing about the like we're snobs now. <laughs> Think about the Toyotas is that, yeah, I didn't know what it was like to not have to do a major, major repair every year <laughs> until we got a Toyota. Yeah. And now it's mostly oil changes and tires. Mm -hmm. And I like that. Yeah. Here, here, it's interesting because here in Wyoming, it's really like the old West. Mm -hmm. And so there's some really rugged roads and a lot of mountainous things. And I've noticed that a lot of people really like the Toyotas here as well. Yep, they're they're the probably the number one car that people drive here. Gail says, I have the Diana Dime Binder Anniversary Edition. 
uh, is it different than the first edition? So if it's the 20th anniversary, it's not. Um, this one is just hardback, um, so that um, it's a hardback edition. Well, I wasn't. I was wondering if she means the first edition, like the original, or she means like volume one. Well, she says anniversary. No, the deal, the binder anniversary edition. Do you remember that one that was actually like in a binder? I forgot we had had that one, and I saw it at somebody's house the other day. Oh, that one. Oh, well, yeah, that, that, that one's different than this then. That was a 20th anniversary edition. Well, the recipe, number of recipes is the same, isn't it? I don't think, I think there's 40 more recipes in here. Hmm. I don't know. I have no idea. I don't know. I don't know. Huh. We had, we've had 12 editions of the book over the last well, 25 years. In, so. in 2019, we, when we started the 20th anniversary edition, that's when we added 40 new recipes. So if it's before 2019, yeah, it would I don't know. it would have 40 less recipes yeah. than the current ones. Since Cincy, I love Irish breakfast. Also, that one's a very good. Also, Barbara, we have a thrift store a quarter mile from our house. I donate some more um, and buy from them often. Yep, I do too. It's funny. I just say I just rotate it out of my house. And even now with the videos, I told Mike, I said, well, guess what I need to do is just because we're trying because we had a business meeting this morning, even though we took off, but. Um, I said, you know, I should just buy stuff from the thrift store, showing what good deals I can get, and then just turn them back around and just <laughs> give it back to the thrift store. Then, if it we makes a good video. We actually, uh, we actually got together with a friend of ours who's the manager of one of the thrift stores here, and uh, we suggested that, and I think he thought that was funny. yeah, like he'd be getting he'd be getting paid twice on it. <laughs> Vicky says, when my daughter was a young teen, I shrunk her sweater and she told me never to touch her laundry again. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Our kids, when they Good turned- Good job. <laughs> figured out a way to persuade her. Our kids, the rule was, well, well, it wasn't a rule. It just sort of happened. When they turn 14, then they start doing their own laundry. And so all of them, I know, how does it make you feel to have to do your own laundry? It's child labor. It's child abuse, child labor. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Get over it. So now I do- <laughs> <laughs> See what See what... <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. You can pay for your counseling later. <laughs> <laughs> um, <coughs> yeah, so now I only do laundry every two weeks. I do a load for Mike, a load for me, and a load of towels. And then once every two or two weeks or so, I do a load of sheets. So. And that's all the laundry I do now, which is nice. Oh, Ains Geisha <laughs> says, I have a Toyota, but nonstop problems every two months. We bought it secondhand salvage title, wondering if I should replace the rebuild. Salvage titles, mm -hmm. what happened? Yeah, we never buy never. anything yeah. with a salvage title yep. because we one time bought a vehicle that had a salvage uh -huh. title, and it was exactly the same vehicle as one that we had that was really, really nice for a lot of years for us. But the salvage title one, they repaired everything. But what I discovered later is um, it's never the when same. It, it, especially if there's a big jolt when it crashes mm -hmm. and even the parts that aren't part of the crash, the sudden stop can mm -hmm. cause failures inside. And they, when it, it failed after not having it for very long, they don't catch it all. The catastrophic engine failure. And they said that even though the engine wasn't involved in the accident, they said that they thought that the internal parts of the engine were damaged from that. So we will not buy any Anything kind of salvage. with a salvage title. And we did have one Toyota that we didn't end up liking. Um, it had some things that went wrong with it, but that one we could have, we should have seen it. I saw it, but we should have recognized it before we bought it that it was a flood damaged car. We were desperate, and it, that was our stupid car buying mistake. But so some things like salvage and flood damage and other things like that it doesn't matter what brand you have it's going to be a problem for you so i wouldn't buy yeah. that it's best if you can buy an old grandma car or a one owner car like the one we just got the lady took care of it at the dealer everything was done at the dealer she was the only owner she was the only owner she kept meticulous yeah. records of everything that was our done camry to that we've had for 10 years it was an old grandma car she only drove it to the grocery store once a week everything was maintained really well but Every car that we've gotten that has salvage title, which is what two cars, three cars we've had that had salvage, salvage titles, titles have been never a, a did. Every, time. every single one of those were money pits, and that's what happened. That's where your problem yeah. was. Mandy says making my bed every day is non-negotiable. Yes, it is non-negotiable for me also. Jim, did you get our Bible donation and family picture? Uh 
No, but have we been to the post office well, for a week? Well, it was like Thursday or so, Wednesday or Thursday when we last So it's went. been a week since I've we went to the post office. So I've, we'll go check and we'll let you know. Twice I tried to go, but we keep the post office key on the car key ring. And since we have the new vehicle, we haven't got I've it been here twice yet. without the key. So we'll go check tomorrow, Jim, for you. Okay. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing the picture. <laughs> yeah. Big Pond says, lost my husband three months ago. Yes, I'm depressed. If I don't feel like doing anything, I won't. Listen, that is totally understandable. I get that. But it's okay to have days where you don't do anything. But that cannot be a permanent state of life. I totally understand. And you're going you're gonna to be feeling like that. That's okay to feel that way. But it cannot be a permanent state when... Um, when you're just depressed and you don't do anything at all, all the time. So yes, it's fine to do that. Not do anything once in a while. I do that. I mean, I have days where I just like, I don't feel like doing anything. Fine. But I at least get my bed made. I get the dishes done. I get dressed every day. I put on my makeup every day. It doesn't matter if I'm staying home or leaving. I never, ever, ever stay in my pajamas all day unless I am in bed sick. And that has happened like twice in my entire life. So I get dressed, put on my makeup, and do my hair every single day. It doesn't matter. Grammy's Midlife Suburban Homestead says, whoa, that's a long title, says, my girls loved getting volume two for Christmas. I bought three with cosmetic imperfections. They were impeccable except for a little dented corner. Yes, we do have, you guys go check. We do have scratch and dents. So you'll see like this one here. Can you see right here how the post office dinged that one up? It's little tiny things like that. The books are still perfectly fine. We don't send falling apart books, if but I can't send them. I can't sell them as new. So, well, and occasionally we'll get somebody that'll say, "I got a book and it was falling apart, and I've had it for a year and a half, and I just duct taped it." And if you can, if you get a book, we don't send out a new one like two years from now. If you use in the meantime. But if you get it from the mail and it's damaged when it gets there, let us know and we'll we'll make that good. Yeah, Wanda, <laughs> I blocked that comment, so it's gone and blocked. Uh, yes, guys, please, thank you, Wanda. Please hit the thumbs up button. We appreciate it. It helps to um, get the algorithm out to um, no to, to let YouTube know that uh, people like you. Yes, I got the troll taken care of, guys. Thank you. Um, how do you find the scratch and dent books? If you go to our, our book sales page, there's another option that says scratch and dent or something like that. You know what the title is of the dented of the damaged books, maybe damaged. What did we title it? I don't know what we titled uh, I think it's it. discount bin, but I don't discount think we have bin. any right now. I think I've, I think we sold If we more. have some, they'll be in there. So well, there's that one, I guess. <laughs> oh, that's your, that's your demo my, model. Yeah, that's my demo model. Um, Wait, so I'm Grammy. I'm so glad. Effective book is a I know. Uh, Susan says, "Hey, Mike and Tara. Susan from Tennessee. Where is the weekly and monthly list in your planner? It's at the very front. It's at the very front, like the second or third page." Yeah, at the moment there aren't any in the discount okay. bin. We can look for some. Okay. Um, Cheryl, I gave my two nieces the cookbooks for Christmas, and they were excited. Thank you, guys. They're twenty five percent off right now in the description below. Um. Mom is taking a break. She's resting. She hasn't slept very well since everything started happening with uh, her brother dying and grandma needing to help grandma. And so um, so we're just not having her on for a while so she can take a break. Um, any suggestions for keeping stored clothes smelling good besides dryer sheets? I mean, you could put fragrance oil with on a cotton ball. You could do that. Um, you could use fabric softener in your... Um, in your wash, like downy liquid fabric softener, that would help. Um, but my question is, I mean, I guess if you have like winter clothes stored or something versus summer clothes, but why are you not wearing your clothes enough to keep them fresh? I mean, I don't have so many clothes that I need to worry about them not smelling good. They are used. And even after six months, of sitting for the summer and then I switch over to my winter stuff. It's still, I don't have a problem with that. So maybe you need to get rid of some clothes. I don't know. Valley Badlands Lego, the old style Tomka toys were the only thing that I would not toss. Yeah, I get that. 
Can you see me the next ones? Roxanne, our grandkids also gave old toys less fortunate kids two weeks before Christmas. Yeah. Are you on four right now? Uh, yeah. Oh, there's two fours. Uh, Wanda, anybody a member of Instant Cart wondering if they still charge a service fee? I don't know. That's a very good question. Can you guys ask, uh, can you guys answer if, um, if Instant Cart still charges? I don't know. Barbara, she has a Dino dime that is white with the red binder. It's a smaller size. Yes, we did the bigger size because people were wanting full color pictures. So we gave them full color pictures. So uh, in order to do that, because our books are so large and so packed with information, we had to go to the hardcover. The volume one has 1,200 recipes and tips to help you save money and get in in the kitchen quick. Volume two has 800 recipes and tips to help you get in and out of the kitchen quick. Our gluten-free dairy free edition has 800 recipes and tips to help you gluten-free cooking. No sandy, gross gluten-free cooking. It is all absolutely delicious. And then guys, our planner is 10% off right now. Undated, 365 days, 400 pages. Woohoo. KG, where do you get your tree ornaments for other holidays such as Valentine's Day? I collect them at thrift stores and garage sales. I just collect little tchotchkes and then I just uh, put either ornament hangers on them or I'll set them on the tree and wrap the branches around so that they'll sit on the tree. Um, I've made ornaments. Like I have some paper hearts <coughs> that I made out of red construction paper. Rocks Ann, if the boys didn't have the rooms cleaned on Friday at 8 p.m., the broom swept everything on the floor into a large bag, trust plastic garbage bag. That's, I mean, I think that's a fine idea if they don't take care of it. <laughs> Lisa, you will feel better getting up and ready for the day, no matter how hard it is, even if that's all you've done with food cleanup and, and taking out the trash. It's a vicious cycle. Yes, that is, it doesn't matter how absolutely sick I was in bed. Because I have chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia, guys. So there were times when I was just flat in bed for weeks at a time. I always, always, always got dressed, did my hair, and put on my makeup. My makeup is very minimalist. But I put on moisturizer, put on foundation, put on blush, put on powder and lipstick, and that's it. It literally takes me three minutes if that long to put on my makeup. I don't do eye shadow and mascara every day. <laughs> but and I put on my shoes every day. Jeannie says the recipes in the gluten free book are fabulous, especially the white bread. Thank you. Isn't the white bread good? I know it's totally good. Um, let's see, you can send me the next ones. Jane says, we do not use dryer sheets, too many chemicals. Use dryer balls. Well, that's fine if you want to use dryer balls. Although, I don't think there's too many chemicals. Although some people, like my son is allergic to fragrance, so he can't use things like that. <clears throat> Chris, I need Tara to come over to find my zapper. I lost my phone and zapper today. Found the phone. I don't know what a zapper is, but that sounds very ominous. <laughs> Uh, I'm sending this thing out. I wonder if she means like that little mouse thing that you used to have. Hmm. I don't know. Good question. I think six is the right number here. Anyway, I'm sending you some. Karen says, my son said that our two ingredient fudge in volume two and our website guy added pecans. It was like from the store. Thank you guys. Our Christmas candies video at super easy recipes on my other channel, super easy recipes went viral. Yeah. We were super excited. And I was like super, super happy. Jane from the country got the best Christmas gift ever. A new granddaughter was born. Oh, that's great. Yay, first congratulations. And she says first grandchild wow. too. Wow. I don't know. Do you think we'll ever have grandkids? I don't know if we'll ever have grandkids. I don't know. I'm not so sure. Uh... Um, Kimmy, thank you for mentioning NADH. I'm on most of those supplements, but hadn't heard of NADH. I'm really hoping it helps with energy. So I would definitely give it a try. Georgetown did a study on it in 1996, seven, somewhere around there is when I started it. 
And back then, I mean, we were making like $6 an hour. So it was a huge expense for me. It was the first supplement I ever tried. And it was a huge expense. It's not now comparatively, it's like $20 a month. It's not that expensive. But back then, $20 was a lot for us. But after three months, you have to give it a full three months, a full three months, give it a full three months and then see if you have more energy. You may or may not, but it's worth giving it a try. Also, I've noticed taking Moringa. I just, I tried it before with Moringa and it didn't do anything, but now I'm noticing that I do have more energy with Moringa also. So you might try that too. Elizabeth, she loves our books. I just opened a page to recipe I want to use and it stays in place. Yes, she doesn't have it keep flipping back and forth. So we, this is a special lay flat binding, guys. This cookbook has never been used, but look at this. See, it just lays flat so that you don't have flip pages flopping all over the place. And we have a special stitching that we pay extra for so that the books will lay flat and they won't keep flopping up for you. Smite Zone, is that the name? I think so. <laughs> anyway, it's a special, yeah, it's a special binding that does yeah. that. Rita, loved seeing all of our kids. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it was pretty awesome having them here. And it was surprising that they wanted to be on. They kept telling us they didn't want to be in the videos anymore. And we're like, okay, that's fine. And then they all say they want to be in I'm the happy video. with that. It was great to have like, them okay. on. <laughs> it was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, Teresa, I get my NADH and Moringa at, on Amazon is where I get it. Um, yeah, so that's where I get mine. Um, NADH, I think I think it's an amino acid. I can't remember. I think, I think it's an amino acid. If you Are you sure it was Georgetown? Mm -hmm. okay. I know it was Georgetown. If you t was it CFS or fibro that it... The study was it free. helps with your chronic fatigue syndrome the most. So I, if, if you type in like chronic fatigue syndrome study and ADH. Moringa helps with the fibromyalgia. There, you yeah. probably can find the study online. I don't know why my nose is itching so bad. I'm sorry, guys. So, oh, somebody's talking about me. <laughs> mm, I'm sure that's what it is. <laughs> Just one uh. person. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, no, hey I, I was my biggest fan today re-watching an old yes. video. I was like, well, I'm pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> now, today when we were talking about trying to figure out where we're going for videos in New Year, and somebody made a comment on an old video, and I had no idea what she was talking about. I, uh, For the life of me, I couldn't figure out what this video was talking about. Because, you know, we don't, we don't title always the videos of what they are because people won't click on them. So... Um, so, uh, I was like, I have no idea what this video is about. So I was watching, I was like, oh, I'm pretty funny. And I didn't even know it. <laughs> I was like, laughing at myself. Oh, now I see why people like, <laughs> it's funny because when Ellie and I were in Ireland in 2017, we were in the moment of wondering why people like our show. And then Ellie and I were there and I thought, oh, okay, I get it now. <laughs> Yeah. I was loving it. Actually, we should don't say anything, but we should mention that. Oh yeah. Someone. Um okay. Uh Shay, maybe my whole family loves using our cookbook our your cookbooks. It's inspired a lot of creativity, not only in the kitchen, entire household. Thank you. Yes, we have a lot of whole household tips in there, like how to make cleaning products, but also tips on how to clean and cook easier and more efficiently. So that you're not wasting time and energy. Carissa loves my fortitude. She knows how hard it is. Do I have fortitude? You have fortitude. I didn't know I had fortitude. I just thought it was, I refuse to be a couch potato. Um, okay. Can you send me the next ones? Let's see. Oh, Fat Chic Modest is on. <laughs> Ellie got married. Yes, Ellie got married back in August. Uh, Chris, I'm going to try NADH. Yeah. If you guys have severe fatigue, NADH might help you. Your mitochondria is not functioning correctly when you have chronic fatigue syndrome type things, long COVID now, those kinds of things. Um, so did you say send you this more? Yeah. 
So NADH may help with that. Deb, how do we find Super Easy Recipes channel? Mike, as soon as he sends me the next comments, we'll put the link in there for you. But if you type in Super Easy Recipes on YouTube, I have, I think, 17,000 subscribers right now, something like that. And um, you can use, you can see it. Do you use the disable NADH? I don't know what disable NADH is. NADH is Mary Ellen. I just get the, oh, dissolvable maybe? Yes, I use the dissolvable. Yeah. Um, it's funny because so. at the time we saw the study and the study was saying something like a small number of people noticed an improvement during the study, but then over a longer period of time, a lot more people. So we tried it and she was on it for a long time. We're like, I don't think this is doing anything. We don't want to keep spending this every month. Then she went off of it and I thought, Okay, well, Mike's we gotta like, go back on this stuff. You're taking that like, stuff. Yeah, you're get, definitely gonna get back on that. <laughs> it's been a 25 year process of me working on getting better from my chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia, but I'm to the point now where I'm mostly functional now. I'm not gonna say I'm cured, but I'm pretty functional. And now I'm realizing, oh, wait, normal people are tired when they do this stuff. This isn't a CFS fibromyalgia thing, this is just. You just spent two and a half hours cleaning the garage tired. And so, yeah, so it's taken me a while to build up and do the things and I'm still working on it. But um, yeah, so anyway, it's um, been a process, that's for sure. Oh, wait, I'm supposed to share super easy recipes. Okay. Yes. If you're waiting for the super easy, easy recipes link, it is now being shared in the comments. Yay. Debbie said she made the farmhouse bread and our sourdough bread for Christmas presents. Yes. And they loved both. Yay. Both of those recipes are in our volume two and our volume one. They are also on our website, livingonadime.com. You guys can go try them. Aren't they delicious? The farmhouse bread came from our viewer, Roxy. I only have put like, I think that's the only viewer recipe I've ever put in my books. I thought about just doing a viewer cookbook because you guys have such good recipes. But um, Roxy, she was a faithful viewer for like 10 years, way when we first started back in 1997. And she sent me that recipe and it was so good. And I'm like, can I share this? She's like, sure. So <laughs> hello, <Wow>. Rob. <coughs> How are you? Our kids wanted to go to Missouri this week so they could go see their friends. We had thought about going somewhere since uh, we didn't didn't do Christmas normal. Uh, and what makes a video go viral? Well, people start watching it a lot. That's really what it amounts to. Thumbs ups and people watching it and watching the entire video. And then it just hits a nerve and a lot of people start watching it. And YouTube shows it more and then it just keeps going. I, she says what makes it qualify to go viral. So does that well, that's mean? That's what I, I just think... said. Oh, well, I think what I was wondering what she I was wondering if she meant what what makes it qualify to be called viral. Oh, well, let me just show you here. I will show you right now. <laughs> Except <clears throat> turn that oh, can you share it? Okay. Oh, on oh, it's not on okay. What yeah, I guess that's not gonna matter. Okay, so let me show you. Right here. Are we still on? Did I just boot us off? Oh, everyone says we're frozen. I'm just getting them. Ha, 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 ha. Okay, let's see. Do I have any, don't have any pertinent information on here. Okay, so right here, let me show you. It is when you see this on your screen. See how the arrow goes <laughs> just like that, just goes. <laughs> <laughs> With the sound well, it's, effects. It's more impressive if you show the whole channel, although that might give information. that Informa What's more impressive? Oh, okay. No, actually, yeah. Okay, hold on. Does Let it, me. Does it, I wasn't sure if that's on there. I don't not. know that, that it'll matter, but okay. So then right here, look at that puppy. Viral is like, see how it's all, that. this is the lower flat water, flatter ones. It's kind of the normal trend. And when it suddenly shoots up like that. So here's, using. so here's our Thanksgiving video that went viral right here. But then here's our candies video right there that went viral. So that's how you know when they go viral, they, um, they uh, do straight up like that. And you're like, 
Yes. In the old days, viral just meant you got millions and millions of views. But now I think Tar's using it in most YouTubers. It's kind of like if you have a baseline of what your videos usually do, and then something just goes crazy 20 times as big as that, then you might call yeah. that viral. Yeah. Yeah. Um, somebody was talking about IBS earlier. If you have IBS, try cutting out gluten and dairy and see if that helps you feel better. I used to have that. And as soon as I cut out gluten, it totally went away. It totally went away. So check gluten and dairy. Somebody was talking about having that if you have IBS. Um, Roxanne, are we doing more thrift store walkthroughs, that kind of thing? So we hashed out a plan today. Are we firm on our plan, honey? You shouldn't announce the plan until we have. I didn't announce anything. Some certainty. I, know I didn't is, say I anything. Think you're prepping yourself to announce. To no, I was just wondering: Are we firm on our plan? I think so. But that's okay. what I was hoping we would kind of see what I have to put up with. See. Let it simmer for a few days and make sure we totally this understand. This has been what simmering for a month now. But we came up with a plan today. We know what direction we're gonna go for um starting next week and um we want to put one of these in the store that one to, that's the one i use this one? yeah mike's putting the nadh that i specifically take guys steve and libby asked uh, and i just take one of those in the morning on an empty oh. stomach it has to be on an empty stomach Something wrong. so um this is the one that i take um how long did it take for gluten-free to work for me three days three days is all it takes for me now to notice. But then after two weeks, I really feel much better, but it just takes three days for me to actually notice that I feel different. So yeah. Um, okay. Back to questions. I was talking about something and I can't remember what I was talking about. Oops. Oh, well, Michelle ordered two of our cookbooks, giving one to her son for a wedding gift and the other to her daughter. Thank you guys. They are 25% off in the description below right here you can just follow the link amy i found out i'm going to be a great grandmother oh that's great she oh she doesn't know how <laughs> she feels about it she's only 53. i know i found i let's see how old were we uh, so when i put in this do you, do you think i probably shouldn't say what it's for i'm yeah. sharing the link to the nadh but because we're not like giving medical advice or whatever. I don't yeah. know if we should say what it's for as yeah. I share the link. But anyway, the link is there. Yeah. Um, if you want to try that. So oh, did they, oh, Facebook. Um, and I'm going to add it to our store as well. <coughs> Facebook and is being a turd again. I know that um, Amazon will be fine with it if we just list it in the store. So Amy, when, let's see, how old were we when we saw my ex-boyfriend at McDonald's that time in Wichita? Ooh, not that old. Not So we would have been 24 so I ran into my old boyfriend at, in high school. I was 24 at the time. So he would have been probably 25 or so. And he was going to be a grandpa. <laughs> I was like, okay. Well then. <laughs> I think. Congratulations. 25 or 20. Well, no, we're, wait a minute. BJ Miller. No, I think he was 30. I think he was 30. And he I was, was going to be a grandpa. Were we living in Wichita already? I think he was 30. He was, because BJ and Ellie were born. So he was 30. And yeah, so that was a little weird. He was 30. But I was like, oh man. Yeah, I totally get it. Um, Amazing Grace. Do we have links for the videos? Did you put the super easy links in there for Amazing Grace? I don't know if I put it in for oh. you, Tracy, but let me just yeah. share it real quick here. Uh. I thought you mentioned one of your kids getting married. Yes, our daughter got married in eight, in um, August. I just shared the super easy recipes again. And if for some reason you don't see it there, uh, it's in the description of most of the shows. Oh, except Facebook doesn't allow us to. Yeah. So you can also go to livingonadime.com and click on show notes. And I put all that information in the show notes. Yeah. Debbie, seriously try a food elimination diet. If you have problems with that, I'm noticing that like 90% of the people that I talk to, if they do a food elimination diet, it will take care of it. And for me, when I cut out gluten, all of my IBS went away. I won't give you the gory, gory details, but let me tell you, it was just very nice. So 
a quick question on the NADH um, again. <clears throat> you just, the ones that we have in our store, you just take one of those a day? I take one a day, but you can, I think you can take up to two or three. I don't know for sure. Just research it for yourself. You can take more than one. I know that, but um, let's see. Mm, there was a question here that I was looking. Lisa's a young grandma too, and she loves it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. I thought Weird thing on that is I think, um, I'm sure it'll be awesome, but at the moment it's not something I can quite imagine. <laughs> Jeannie, I've researched using black seed oils. I have not. I don't know anything about that's a new one on me. Do I still use Alka-Seltzer? Yes. But not like I used to. Now that I've done my food elimination and I know what foods make me sick, I don't have to take it near as much. I only take it when I poison myself, either accidentally or purposely. I know it's my own darn tooth fault. But I take an Alka-Seltzer. If I eat something that makes me sick, I take it right away and I do better. So Jolene, NADH is over the counter. Yes. Susan, the ch my kids are on the last week's video, so last uh, live stream. Yeah, last live stream. What'd you guys think of BJ's hair? <laughs> as soon as COVID hit, he stopped getting a haircut. He was so excited because he would have to go get his haircut like every three, three day, three weeks or so. So it was funny. Um, Brenda, yes, I take moringa in the capsules. Is what I take. Uh, um, Kelly, okay. how much the cookbooks? They're each one is a different price, but I am uh, sharing the link here so you can go mm -hmm. check it out and see. What special dinner for New Year's? I don't know. We haven't gotten that far yet. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> Wanda says, "I bet you're glad you didn't marry that high school boyfriend." Oh my goodness! Yeah, talk about mistakes were made. God had a plan for her, and it was me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I could say the same thing the other way around. Oh man, me too. <laughs> um, I could agree with you. Debbie says about the Simpsons. Yeah, Debbie, don't make your life hard. Just eat potatoes and rice and then like chicken and fruits and vegetables and just cut out. I mean, if you want to get yourself some gluten-free, you know, like vanilla wafers at the store or something or Vanilla, when I started gluten-free 15, 20 years ago, 15 years ago, when I started gluten-free 15 years ago, they didn't have all the fancy schmancy stuff they have now. Go get you some gluten-free bread in the freezer aisle of your grocery store. It's expensive. I'm not going to tell you it's not expensive. It's expensive. That's why I have my bread in my gluten-free cookbook. It's a lot cheaper. But just to get you a test... Oh, that doesn't sound good. Um, get you some frozen gluten-free bread. Just make it easy. Peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. It tastes best toasted. Or a ham sal or a ham sandwich or an egg salad sandwich. Tuna sandwich. Um, and start with that. Don't make it complicated. It, truly, a gluten-free diet is not that difficult to do. It's really not. So, yeah, don't, don't worry about that. Um, so, Amazing Grace says, I'm already subscribed, but it's not notifying me. So, yes, click the bell so that you will be notified. Cynthia made our 90-minute rolls in Volume 1, the red one right there, for Christmas dinner, and they were a hit. Um, man, what happened with my nose tonight? I don't know what happened. What is vanilla bark? I have no idea what vanilla bark is. No, I think she's meaning like the oh, vanilla like candy bark. It's white chocolate almond bark, white almond bark, and you melt it. That's what it is. Ooh, here, do you mean to send you the this right here or no? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Susan says stress causes my I stress causes my IBS cutting down gluten made no difference. Did Fob Matt stay away from those foods? Yeah. I mean, just try, just keep trying and see. It's a worth it at least to try for two weeks if it see if it'll help. Fob FODMAP does help some people. 
it didn't do anything for me. But like I said, I tried Moringa 10 years ago and it did nothing for me. And I tried it again. And now it seems like it's doing something. So, you know, just keep trying stuff. This is my biggest thing is I just keep trying stuff. And I've been trying stuff for 20 years and now I'm to the point where I'm stable, normal person. Jim loved Ellie with the Santa. That's, that's funny. funny. What was the Santa? I don't remember. She was dancing him around as his head was popping up. Oh, stuff. that's hilarious. <laughs> so, yeah. I was looking the other way, but I yeah. totally get it. Where is the subscribe button? Um, Wanda, I just, just go to Super Easy Recipes. It should be at the bottom. Is she says I don't see it anywhere, but I just checked and it was there. Huh. So. I don't know. Uh, let me just. Let me go when it's Denise not. says, I have too many grandkids. I could send you a couple. No, thanks. We're good at the moment. <laughs> so actually, it might be different if you're on mobile. Because it's here on the desktop. It's right underneath where it says Super Easy Recipes. It says subscribe. Mm -hmm. But somebody showed us a mobile the other day, and it only had a down. There wasn't a thumbs up option. It was only a thumbs down option. That's because they had already clicked. They had already clicked the thumbs up. We I figured see. out. Yeah. I gotcha. Okay. Jolene, Let's I watched the candy video in its entirety the day before Christmas, but I wanted you to make more candy life. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, let's see. Oh, Rita says, I married the best smart woman. <laughs> Thank you. Glenda finally got to re or Glenna got to finally catch a live. Her 10 year old daughter and I made a homemade barbecue sauce and she said she's never buying store bought again. I know. Okay. Well this recipe right here, dining on a dime volume one, you can get it at living on a dime.com guys, 25% off right now. All of our recipes are tested. Some of these recipes are 70 years old and they are delicious. You will never eat a better peanut brittle than in volume one. You will never eat a better peanut brittle ever. One of your top five recipes. Anyway. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. Yeah. It is absolutely delicious. Absolutely. Well, and if delicious. That, that video has you making it in the video that they were talking about the recent candy video, uh, we should share. It's on super mm -hmm. easy recipes. Anyway, I'll share the super easy recipes link, but in that yeah. candy video, as Tara is making it, there are a few things that are it's a little un, unexpected and she talks about it and shares and yeah. it turns out great mm. even with the unexpected. And so it's kind of really interesting. So I started leaving in all of the mistakes and stuff because I want people to see, and I believe me every single day I get idiot trolls that are like, well, you're just a hot mess. Well, this is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. You don't know what you're doing. No, I'm leaving this stuff in. So that you know when the phone rings and X happens, you can pull out of it. I've maybe had, of all my recipe failures, I've maybe only had three things in 30 years that I've actually thrown in the trash that weren't savable. And even when I caught the entire oven on fire, <laughs> all of it was edible. I was shocked that it didn't actually like destroy it or change the flavor or anything. All of it was edible. We say that, but we didn't ask you. <laughs> I tested it before she got it. So, <laughs> but um, Debbie lard, how long does it last? I have lard. That's a year past the expiration date that I'm getting used up now. And it's just fine at the moment. If I don't get it used up, I'm going to make soap out of it. So yeah. Uh, Jolene, when you melt almond bark, do not get water in it. Yes, it will turn grady. You are correct. Jennifer went on carnivore diet and my IBS went away. That's because you cut out the gluten. I guarantee it. I know that's why the carnivore, carnivore helped with that. Now, a lot of people do go grain free and that's great. I did it and I gained 10 pounds. So now I'm on my high carb, high fat diet. I don't know <laughs> if it's going to do anything or not, but I'm trying it. Um, so yeah, Christine, I just had a commercial. Yeah, YouTube has decided to start putting ads in the lie live streams now. So Sue, does anyone know how to get rid of fatty liver? I think it's just because you're overweight from what the doctor told <clears throat> us. us. I was going to say, <laughs> are you going to say me or you? <laughs> well, I didn't want to point anybody out. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> so I think that's, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting that um, I know a lot of people like sodas, and we had, well, I'm tired, didn't, but I had some over Christmas because the kids all had mm -hmm. them and I was sharing it. And the other day I was eating some bran flakes and I looked at the package and they're just the plain ones without the raisins or anything. It said six grams of sugar, 12% of your daily allowance. So I did the math. I was like 50 grams. Huh? So I was thinking, I wonder what things around here have sugar and I'm curious how much. So I looked at a can of that soda. It was 46 grams. And I was like, Holy moly. <laughs> this one can is, is the entire daily allowance of sugar. Yeah. I think that's the problem for a lot of us. Yeah. And I, I, I'm fairly lean on the sugar most of the time, but I still, it's way more than yeah. it should be. Yeah. Rhonda says you can smell when shortening goes bad. You'll smell when your lard goes bad. It, it has a very distinct bad smell to it. So you'll wow. know when it goes bad. Pamela says, I like you leaving the mess in makes me feel like a normal person. When I cook. Yeah. Well, that's what, so I didn't finish that story, but that's why I leave all the mistakes and messes in the video. And now I'm purposely leaving them in. I used to edit some of them out, believe it or not, but because my brain isn't always working and mostly because I have distractions when I'm cooking most of the time, um, <laughs> I, uh, with four kids, five kids and a husband, when I was cooking, somebody was always talking to me. So I was like always having disasters. So I left those things in so that you can see how to come out of it and what you can do to do it. So Ruth says, fatty liver, skinny people also, it's what you eat, drink that makes fatty liver for instance, alcoholics have fatty liver. Yeah, that can be true. Yeah, that can be true, but it is. I mean, it's just like skinny people can be diabetic. It's the same thing. Normally, it's caused by being overweight. Normally, you're diabetic because you're fat. Well, yeah, it's type 2, right? Yeah. But there are people who are diabetic, a small minority of them, but there are who are skinny and diabetic. It's the same exact thing. So, yeah, that's totally fine. 25% off our cookbooks right now, guys. <clears throat> Livingonadime.com. If you want to get organized, um, our planners are 10% off. Our cookbooks are 25% off. Our planners are 10% off. 400 pages, 365 days undated so that you don't lose any days if you miss a day or two. And you will get organized we will see you guys next time. If you want a free Bible, we also have free Bibles on our website. Yep. Livingonadime.com. We will see you guys next time. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. See you next year. <laughs> ah! Yep. <laughs> Bye.